Hello and welcome, dear viewer, to Start Select, the weekly video game show from GameSpot UK. This week, I'm going to be taking a holiday in Wii Sports Resort. Luke Anderson revisits his childhood with G.I. Joe, and Alex assumed Kobe will be staying dry to bring us an upcoming preview of Bethesda's Wet. Finally, we'll be giving away copies of Watchmen The End Is Nigh Complete on the Xbox 360 and announcing the winners of last week's Overlord 2 competition. But now, let's skydive into Woohoo Island for Wii Sports Resort. Whether or not you're interested in Wii Sports Resort, it's fair to say that it's one of the biggest, most important releases of the year. First up, it's the sequel to the best-selling game of all time, a 45 million unit seller that more or less sold the Wii single-handedly. It's also the first Nintendo title to use the new Wii Motion Plus, an upgrade that allows the Wii Mote to determine rotational motion for more accuracy. Finally, it arrives at a time when industry analysts are claiming that Wii console sales are starting to slow down. So, does Wii Sports Resort have what it takes to live up to its heritage? Let's head to Woohoo Island to find out more. Wii Sports Resort is set on the same pristine wonderland that acted as the backdrop to Wii Fit. Wii Sports Resort, though, throws you straight into the action, as you descend onto the island out of an aeroplane with a parachute strapped to your back. As you plummet to Earth, you have to get into formation with the other holiday makers on your trip before pulling the chute to reveal the Wii Sports Resort logo. Wii Sports Resort has a lot more games in it than the original Wii Sports, with 12 activities over the four in the original. True, some of these are simply revisions of the previous games. Both bowling and golf make a return, but they're also hugely improved by the Wii Motion Plus technology. You can now really feel the accuracy when you put spin on a bowling ball. While the increased precision makes golf even more realistic than before. The new games are the real stars of this package though, and a few of them really make the most out of the Motion Plus accessory. The three standouts for us are Frisbee, Swordplay and Archery, all of which really benefit from the increased accuracy that's available. In Frisbee, the slightest change to the angle of your throw makes a huge difference to where it ends up. You sometimes have to curl your shot in order to hit two targets, while the dog that catches the disc is unbelievably cute. Swordplay is the best game of the bunch for Harmony though, as slicing through objects feels incredibly satisfying. In this game, you have to chop through random items in the angle indicated on screen, and in two-player mode where you have to beat your competitor, it's incredibly addictive. Archery is the final game that we just couldn't get enough of. You have to control the angle of your bow using the Wii Remote, then pull back the arrow using the nunchuck. It starts out pretty easy, but you soon have to start taking aim at far away targets while also taking into account the wind factor. It's not all great news though for Wii Sports Resort. Some of the new games just aren't up to scratch. Wakeboarding sounds like a lot of fun, but all you have to do is flip the remote to jump waves, then balance it back in order to land. Basketball is also boring and repetitive, and actually far trickier than it needed to be. But cycling is the one game that we just can't fathom being in here at all. You have to play it by shaking the Wii Remote and the Nunchuck sequentially to mimic the pedalling, but we'd rather try cycling up Everest than play this game again. Like Wii Sports, Wii Sports Resort is a pretty bare bones package. There's not much in the way of extras, as every sport type is unlocked from the beginning, but you can unlock new variants and courses by playing through the game. There's also a new feature to pull in some of the most popular Mii characters from the internet, so if you select this option you might see Spider-Man or Homer Simpson standing by as you play. Wii Sports Resort is released in July 24, 2009 in the UK, and if you liked our first look at the game, make sure you check back on the site soon for the full GameSpot.com review. Bethesda's upcoming action game Wet made a big splash at E3 this year, and Alex Sunkobi has all the latest on this promising new title. world's most notorious killers. The Collector. Tarantula. Hi, 
I'm Alex Azun Kobe, and I recently got a chance to get my hands on Wet, Bethesda's upcoming over the top, bloodthirsty third person shooter. Ruby. We don't yet know exactly how the story will pan out, but your first mission is to intercept a black market organ that's being handed off in some shady underground deal. Ugh. However, it's likely that the story will play second fiddle to the outrageous action, based on the few levels we got to experience. Wet is no standard third person shooter. There's no cover mechanic, you don't really need to worry about ammo, and you have a samurai sword for close combat. As the tutorial explains, the point of each level is not just to get to the end, but to leave a bloody trail of corpses in your wake, and to dispatch enemies in as stylish a manner as possible. Thankfully, the game makes over the top executions a simple affair, thanks to responsive and intuitive controls, and a very helpful auto targeting system. When you start an acrobatic move, the world slows down around you, giving you plenty of time to pick out targets, as well as take out those who are automatically selected. Ruby is initially armed with a pair of pistols. As you fly through the air, she will automatically target one, leaving you free to aim with the other. This may sound like it's going to be too easy, but the sheer number of enemies means that you need to take as many opponents in each move as you can. You also rack up score multipliers, in a similar manner to Bizarre Creations Shoot Race at the Club, that increases tied directly to how ridiculous your moves are. Sure, you can just walk around shooting people in the face if you like, but would it not be cooler to do so while sliding headfirst down a ladder, or doing an acrobatic clip off a lamppost? We think so. When sliding and leaping, you have full 360 degree targeting, and the camera swings around to follow your targeting reticule while you leap. Despite having two guns, you only have one fire control, the right trigger, which can make pulling off some shots a little tricky. You need to be sure that your targeting reticule passes over your target at the moment that gun is about to fire. This is rarely a problem though, as you have a rapid rate of fire, even with a slow-mo. Hitting X while running will cause Ruby to whip out her sword and slash at the nearest enemy, and later in the game this can be worked into acrobatic combos to chain ever more impressive stunts together, letting you swipe as you fly through the air or leap up from knee slides. However, all of that is just wet bread and butter action. Ruby has a few other tricks up her sleeves if our demo is anything to go by. One section turns the game into an on-rails shooter as Ruby leaps from car to car along a busy motorway as you pursue the miscreant who's made off with the aforementioned organ. Shooting is a little tricky when perched on top of moving vehicles, but thankfully the slow-mo aiming comes into play as you leap from one crashing car to another. When enemies get into sword range, things get even easier, as a quick slice sends them rolling down the tarmac, missing important parts of themselves. The final piece of this increasingly bloody puzzle is Rage Mode, which takes the game's already over-the-top action and infuses it with a sort of stylized chaos that the likes of Suda51 would be proud of with epitaphs spattering the walls in arcs of pure white blood if you pull off particularly gruesome kills. Here, enemies die in their tens as you slice and dice, and one move even allows you to activate an acrobatic jump by kicking up off an enemy's chest before going into a backflip and shooting them in the face. The game does look to have a bit of a predilection for quick-time events which involve button mashing, Employed to no effect other than annoyance in the section we play to open a couple of doors, or simply pressing the right button at the correct moment to leap from the top of your car onto the next one, for example. Here we go. Wet is shaping up to be a bloody, stylish and fun take on the shooter, infusing it with 70s shtick and a blend of the best blood-drenched silliness from the likes of Tarantino and Pseudo-51. It lies with Dushkut being lined up to voice Ruby in the final game, with other voices being provided by the likes of Malcolm McDowell and Alan Cumming, so expect to see a fair few cutscenes showcasing their vocal talents as the increasingly ridiculous story comes to its conclusion. We're going to be keeping a very close eye on Ruby over the coming months, so keep it tuned to GameSpawn's awesome approaches. And live to tell about it. Time to give away some lovely prizes on Start Select now. Last week we had five copies of Overlord 2 to give away, all you had to do was tell us in which town and which country developer Triumph are based. The answer was of course Delft in the Netherlands, and the winners are David Kieber from Leicester, Jeff Newman from Dundee, and Dylan Robertshaw from Leicester, who all wanted it on the PlayStation 3. We also have Alison Mass, also from Leicester, and Adam North from Northamptonshire, who opted for the Xbox 360 versions. Congrats to all of you, we'll dispatch the minions to deliver these to you personally. 
This week we have five copies of Watchmen The End Is Nigh Parts 1 and 2 to give away on Xbox 360. Now Part 2 is being released on Xbox Live very shortly and the retail release compiles both parts into one package. To win one all you have to do is answer this question. Night Owl and Rorschach are both voiced by the same actors that portrayed them in the movie, but what are their names? Email us the answer to competitions at gamespot.co.uk before the 22nd of July and we'll draw the winners on the next week's show. Luke Anderson believes his childhood might be getting desecrated by the upcoming G.I. Joe film, but that didn't stop him from volunteering to check out the upcoming game from EA. Hi, I'm Luke Anderson, codename Rambo Ando. If, like me, you grew up in the 80s, you're bound to have fond memories of playing around all day with action figures like Mask, Action Man, and Dino Rider. However, one thing we could all agree on is that the real king of action figures was G.I. Joe. I'm going to get back to fighting the war on terror, Cobra Terror that is. But if you're ready to take the fight to those Cobra Rats, here's a short instructional training video you should watch. Based on the real American hero G.I. Joe line from the 80s, G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra is hitting cinemas this summer. EA's action-packed tie-in takes place directly after the events of the movie, and we played a preview build to see how it's looking. Our Xbox 360 demo started out in the Arctic Tundra, where the Joes are investigating a former weapons supply to Cobra, called Military Armaments Research Syndicate, or MARS. It seems MARS have kidnapped G.I. Joe Heavy Duty, and we had to take control of fellow Joes Duke and Scarlet to get him back. The gameplay is third-person action, and automatically locks on to any nearby enemies. A quick flick of the right analog stick will switch between targets, and while the mechanics work well, there are still plenty of threats to keep you busy. There's also a good covering system in place to avoid enemy fire, but because these are destructible, you'll need to keep pushing forward. We eventually ran into the Baroness, one of Cobra's chief lieutenants, and a formidable femme fatale. Unfortunately, after a brief firefight, she escaped, and we had to roll out to rescue Ripcord from the Mars facility. The rules. Watch your backs. Each character has access to three individual special moves, such as Duke's grenade launcher attack. In addition, you can use the movie-inspired accelerator suit once you've killed enough baddies. The suit makes you temporarily invincible and increases your speed and firepower, making you the ultimate super soldier. Characters are divided into three classes. Commandos such as Scarlet are good for short-range attacks. Heavies such as Heavy Duty are suited for long-range. And combat soldiers like Duke are a good balance between the two. You can also perform melee attacks, and some force field equipped enemies can only be defeated in this way. While the game is full of suitably cheesy Saturday morning cartoon action, we noticed a few weaknesses in our adventure. The main concern we had was with the camera. It works well in most situations, but when your character is obscured by objects, or when you backtrack, the camera can't correct itself. This makes it hard to work out what you're shooting at, or if you're being shot at. Meanwhile, the aiming system doesn't differentiate between bonus items and enemies. Switching between targets means you can be firing at an enemy followed by some bonus points, rather than at another enemy. The visual style is inspired by the movie and includes the likenesses of its lead stars. While the story is presented via cutscenes and through regular comms chatter between yourself and headquarters. It's full of amusing dialogue including plenty of cheesy one-liners and snappy comebacks and it certainly guarantees a few laughs. Yo, Joe! According to EA, there are 16 playable characters in total, including four Cobras, and with all of this packed into one game, G.I. Joe fans should certainly be well served. G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra is hitting consoles later this month. For more on the game, check out our written preview, and stay tuned for more content leading up to the game's release. And remember, Go Joe! That's all for this week's Start Select. Remember, you can check out the first leg of the GameSpot Ashes on the site as we take on the Aussies in Street Fighter 4. We'll be back again in a week's time with another Start Select, so we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.